Hey everyone, it's Benita here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's WTF episode, I'm going to take you through the flow condition builder that was released three weeks ago. So the agenda today is covering some beginner level techniques in flow as well as advanced level. And I'm going to show you the Dynamics 365 workflow conditions that you're used to today. I'm only going to be going through a few of them and then we're going to jump straight into the demo. So the first item that I will cover is how to perform equals or does not equal to in flow. So this is something that you can do already in Dynamics 365 workflows today. And the second item that I will show you is contains data and does not contain data. I did go through this in an earlier WTF episode where you were required to use the edit in advanced mode. That is no longer available in the flow condition builder, which is why I'm gonna cover this again in this episode. And then I'm gonna show you how you can reference a field in a related entity record. The final item that I will talk about is the activity count including processes. If this is something that you're not familiar with in Dynamics 365 workflows today, I'm going to point you to another MVP in our community by the name Fureden. Fureden? <laughs> I'm so sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. And he explains the differences between the two. I'm going through the activity count, including processes, because for me, it doesn't make sense to exclude activities that weren't created by workflows. Okay, so in terms of why I'm doing this today, I'm doing it because I feel that there will be people in the community that might be a bit confused with the flow condition builder because it is different to the point and click style of Dynamics 365 workflows. So I really want to help you guys out and I want to make sure that you don't get put off by the flow condition builder because it's not as bad as you think it is. And yeah, so let's jump into the demo. Okay, so my first Dynamics 365 workflow is pretty simple. So it's just saying that we want to check that the customer equals a particular account. In flow, it's straightforward. So this is the new condition builder. And as you can see, it looks different to the um, the one that I would have shown you in earlier episodes and you can go ahead and select fields that you want. You can add additional criteria. You can select them and change it from and to or. You can move fields up and down and you can also make them into groups as well if you select them and you can also add groupings. So this is quite similar to what you are familiar with today in Dynamics 365 workflows. Okay, so if we want to replicate that same type of conditional check in flow, you pretty much select your customer field and in here is when we need to reference the GUID of the account. So simply grab the GUID and you paste it into here and then you can save your record and run your flow. What my flow is doing is it has a trigger that's going to run every day where it will check a list of open cases, so cases that haven't been closed. And within the list, it will perform a check where it's going to check whether the customer equals a particular account. So in this one, it's saying that um, the customer for this particular case doesn't equal that account that I had inserted the GUID for, but my other two cases will meet that criteria and we'll see that a new task has been created against that case. I'm going to jump into my model driven app and I'm going to refresh the case because we should now see the task that has been created by the flow. So this is a task that was created. All right, so the second technique they're going to show you is when you want to do a combination of two actions where you want to reference um, that a field 
contains data, but this field is from a related record. So this is what I will show you in Flow. When you are in Flow and you want to reference a related entity field, if you try do it straight away, so for example, if I type in primary contact, the dynamic content builder is not going to help you find primary content. Well, it doesn't know that the primary content exists because it is a field that is in the account entity and not the case entity. So the action that we want to use is get record. And by using this action, we can reference the primary contact field. Okay, so in here is where I can reference the customer field because this is going to be how Flow will grab the primary contact. And when we go back to our condition builder, we can now reference the primary contact field. So as you can see, Flow is like, oh yeah, cool, I can see it because now um, there is an action that is grabbing the account record from the customer field of the case. So this is it over here. And now the next step is performing the contains data and does not contain data. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you'll see that there is no option that will allow you to select contains data and does not contain data, which is what currently exists in Dynamics 365 workflows today. So the expression that you want to use is what we call Null. So select Null and click OK. So then the option that we select in here will be either equals to. So this means that the primary contact is null. So the primary contact does not contain data. And if you select is not equal to, this is pretty much saying that the primary contact is not null, as in it does contain data, which is what we want. And if it meets that criteria, it will create a new task. So I'm going to save my flow and we're going to rerun the flow. And I'll jump into my model driven app to show you that the task has been created. Cool, so this has succeeded. And let us refresh the case. Ta-da! All right, so that is the task that was created from my flow. Okay, so the final one that we're going to talk about is the activity count including process. So in Dynamics 365 workflows today, there's um, this, this option available at the very bottom. You select it and then you can select activity count including process and you can select your criteria. So this is where I'm saying it's less than one, which is practically zero. And if it meets that criteria, it will create a note um, simply saying that the count is zero. And if there is activity against the case, basically it will create a note. And so my criteria this time is that it's greater or equal to one. So in Flow, to do this, you need to use the list records action. And in the list records action, make sure that you have your filter query set to only return cases where regarding field equals the case that you're running the flow against. And when it comes to the count of activities, there is an expression that you can use called length. And this will pretty much tell you the number of activities returned in this action. So this is where I can select the action and I click OK. And then this is when we can select is greater than or equal to one. So if it meets the criteria, it will create a note. And if it doesn't meet the criteria, um, then it will create another note saying that there are no activities against the case. So let's save and let's run this flow. OK, 
Okay, so I've run the flow and we can see that there are no activities against the case. In my model driven app, this is what the case looks like. So I'm going to refresh. So the flow has just run. So this is the note that was created by my flow saying that there are no activities against the case. When I was doing my testing earlier, here are the two notes that were created from my Dynamics 365 on-demand workflow. So I'm going to create a couple of activities now and we're going to rerun the flow. Cool, so these are my two activities and I'm going to rerun the flow. Cool, and this time it recognizes that there are activities, so the activity count is two. And when we go back to the model driven app and we refresh the case, we should now see a note that has been created. And here it is there. And yeah, I hope you found this WTF episode. And I would love to know, sorry, let me try to get this first right. And I would love to know if you use any of the actions that I show you today. So let me know by posting a tweet or giving me a shout out. And I hope that you find the condition builder cool. And if not, then you can always post your feedback in the Flow community site. Do stay tuned because in my next WTF episode, I'm going to show you how you can set the due date of an activity created because that's another thing that is different in Flow. And I really want to help you guys learn Flow and not get your WTF moments. <laughs> So please continue to watch my WTF series, um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm also on Twitter, so make sure you follow me on Twitter to keep up with my latest blog posts and vlogs. I also have my own blog, so make sure you subscribe to my blog as well. And yeah, thank you for watching and I will see you in my next WTF episode. Alright, bye! Turn up, let's go, let's go.